I got all fresh new brake parts that just showed up in the mail. So I'm gonna be rebuilding the brakes and then putting them on the bike. What more can I say? <laughs> just a little bit. Oh, why am I so stupid? <laughs> Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. All right, so I'm digging into this FX2FL project and we're gonna start off with the wheels. Right now, I'm just going to be taking it apart as much as I can without removing the seals just have a look in there and see what those bearings are looking like and then we'll go from there so that's the first job I guess all right so to begin with all I really need for this job is a little pair of pliers for getting this C clip out I should be able to get it all out with just this so these wheels were relaced by my dad and my brother but it was my brother's bike before and for some reason my brother opted to not pull the the hubs apart yet so they've not been pulled apart normally my dad would do that all while the wheels are apart but they did not do it this time all right so i just had to go and run out and grab a fitting and some grease for my little grease gun here i checked out the bearings on this side of the wheels and they seem like they're actually in good shape they aren't crunchy at all when i roll them around or anything like that and they look like they're pretty well packed with grease. So what I did is I just filled around the bearing, between the bearing and the seal with some extra grease. So just right in here, I just used this little needle fitting and I just pushed as much grease in there as I could. And then I pushed it in even further with my finger. So that should be good. The bearings seem like they're just fine. They don't need to be taken out or anything. So we're not gonna take them out. I'm gonna clean my spacers and whatever else has to go in here and put them back together and then I'm gonna get working on the other side I'm gonna do the same thing take it apart feel the bearings see how they feel if they turn smoothly or not and then I'm just gonna pack some extra geese in there just because Loki was out on the town today he just got home didn't ya you little guy you so I'm just gonna do the same thing on this side the wheel just take everything out and then I'll just check my bearing and Throw some extra grease in there. All right, so I've just got this needle fitting on my grease gun and um, I'm just shoving it right in here between the bearing and the seal and I'm just gonna fill that entire cavity with grease. Let's put it back together. I'm gonna to do the same exact thing on the other wheel and then we'll see what's next. So I'm working on my dad's shovel head again today and I'm gonna be rebuilding the brake calipers. I got a couple of banana calipers that need rebuilding and all my brake parts just showed up in the mail. So I'll be putting new seals and brake pads on and then the brakes will be done, yippee. Before I put all the new parts on though, I do have to clean the calipers because there's some corrosion in where the seals and the pistons would sit. And I don't want that in there because that's gonna cause leaks. So I'm gonna get an SOS pad and take the calipers up to my kitchen sink and do a little scrub on those. So I'll just show you guys what I'm talking about before I clean it. And then I will show you guys what it looks like when I'm done. Okay, so these are my calipers and they're actually not too bad. The outsides of them look pretty nice and shiny, so that's good, but I wanna clean up the insides where the pistons sit. So you guys can see in there, there's some corrosion just in there where the piston goes and then in that ridge or that whatever you wanna call that, that little valley there where the seal would go. So I'm gonna scrub that out as best I can. I don't want that causing interference with the seals. And then we will be able to put these all back together. And that's my, my piston from this caliper. This piston's not bad, but this piston does have a little bit of wear, I guess. 
it doesn't feel bad or anything but I'll scrub it anyways just to just cuz why not so that's that one yeah and then same thing here just want to get some of that corrosion out and just make it a little bit better just so it seals nicely that one's pretty dirty all right so let's take this up to the kitchen sink and get scrubbing so how many of you have wives who let you clean your dirty parts in the sink or wives who clean their own dirty parts in the kitchen sink <laughs> Okay guys, so I just finished cleaning all my brake caliper parts. I'm not quite done with cleaning them yet because I do want to clean out the threads on these also. And I'm actually just going to use a tap. So I'll just uh, chase these threads with a tap. And then I'm also going to clean my fasteners and I'm just going to take these to the wire wheel and just clean the threads out on these a little bit. So I'm going to actually make sure I thread this tap in by hand before I use the handle on it because I don't want to be wrecking my threads at all. Okay, those are done. Just rinse them out with a little bit of brake cleaner and make sure that they're dry before everything goes back together because we will want to use some Loctite in those and we don't want anything interfering with the Loctite. And I'm just going to take these over to the wire wheel and just clean them up a little bit. Now that everything's all clean, I'm just going to start putting stuff back together. And I just wanted to show you guys one trick that is actually an old trick of my dad's. It's when he's got an old caliper that's got corrosion inside of where the seal sits. The corrosion will eat away at the metal and it actually leaves pitting. So these have actually got a little bit of pitting inside of this ring here inside the caliper where the seal would sit that seals the piston. And to deal with that, I've already done it on this one. I'm just gonna show you guys. I've actually got a thin layer of silicone inside of that ring. And what the silicone does is it's gonna fill where the metal's pitted and it's just gonna give a nice, even like consistent surface for the seal to sit on so you don't end up getting leaks around the seal. So I'll just show you guys here in this camera. As you can see, I've just got a nice thin layer of silicone just inside of that ring there. And I've just filled some of the pitting that was caused by the corrosion in there, making sure like if you get any silicone outside of that ring, like where the piston will be sitting, you clean that off. And you don't want it to be a thick layer. It doesn't have to be thick. It can just be nice and thin, just enough to fill the pitting. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this one here. You can see where it's pitted inside there, where the seal would sit. And I always use DOT5 silicone brake fluid, so you don't have to worry about it damaging stuff. We always use DOT5. We always convert our systems to DOT5 if we have to. Okay, so I'll just pop my seals in and then, yeah, put everything else back together. Sits in there nicely, silicone's not squishing out at all, so that's good. And then we've got our dust covers or boots. That edge of the boot sits in that outer ring there. And then this collar on the boot the collar there is actually going to sit in the groove here on the piston so we'll pop this in this ring and then another thing too that's really important before you pop your pistons in your calipers you just want to give all of the rubber pieces just a nice light film of brake fluid so that everything just slides together. You don't get anything binding up on the rubber pieces. Make 
sure that's in the groove. That just kind of just slides in the groove all on its own. We'll clean these up afterwards with some brake cleaner. So the manual does say, well, they suggest that you put a little bit of anti-seize on these pins so that your brake pads can just slide freely on them. And then I'm also going to be putting a little bit of blue Loctite on my bolts. And um, that's because we don't want those coming out, <laughs> not on your brakes. So anytime I Loctite anything too, guys, if I'm doing stuff that has like multiple fasteners and it needs to be tightened kind of all at the same time or incrementally is I always Loctite all of them. I'll just put my little bit of Loctite on like that and then just let it stand here off to the side and then I'll do them all and I'll make sure that they're all done before I start putting them together. Now I'm gonna actually take this over to the vise and I'm gonna just have the vise kind of help me hold this still while I try to do these up. I'm not gonna clamp it in this vise. I'll show you guys how I've got it set up for that. And then I'll start putting all my bolts in and do them all up at the same time. Okay, so I've just got my vise set up here. I've got a two by six clamped in the bottom there. I've got this piece of rubber here just to help protect everything don't want to be scratching anything up and now that'll hold that nice and steady while I do up the bolts now these are ready to do up and yeah 45 to 50 foot-pounds I'm gonna be doing them up to 45 foot-pounds Okay, that's this one all ready to go. Okay, next one. This guy here, same deal. There they are, guys. All rebuilt and ready to go back on the bike. So that was a pretty easy job. You guys didn't get to see me taking them apart because they were taken apart like two years ago. <laughs> so they've just been sitting here waiting to go back together. And that is it for this little job. One step closer to having this project done. That's it for this video, guys. I hope you guys liked it. I hope you guys found it helpful or maybe even entertaining. And if you like what you see, or if you just like me, or even if you don't like me, but you like my bikes, then like this video, comment, subscribe, do all those things you guys do. And like always, my lovely YouTube people, I'll catch you all on the flip side. Peace. over there hey what are you getting into over there baby I see you hey I see you baby what the heck are you doing there hey you give me that that's it